Welcome back friends. And by this point, if you've been able to complete the previous modules, you've built a beautiful functional application. But since you've come to this module, that tells me that you want more and we can totally do that. Right now, the application retrieves data from a hard-coded array in the housing service. Now, to make our app a little bit more realistic, we can ask support to make HTTP requests for the housing locations. Now, the first change that we'll make is moving the data from a hard-coded array in our application into a standalone server on our local machine that we can use to make HTTP requests. From the command line, run npm install dash g json dash server. Next, we need to create a new file in the homes dash app directory called db.json. Once it's been created, open it in your editor. In db.json, open the file and add the following code. Create an empty JSON object, then add a property wrapped in quotes called locations, set the value to be an empty array. Now we need entries for this array. So we'll copy the entries from our housing service in housing.service.ts, copy the array entries from the housing location list class property and paste them into the locations array in db.json. Now to confirm, in db.json, you should have a JSON object with a property called locations that has an array value containing the data entries for the housing locations. Now let's confirm that our data is working by starting the JSON server. Here's how. From a command line, run the following command. json-server dash dash watch db.json. When the server starts, you will receive a URL. On my machine, it is localhost port 3000 forward slash locations. Opening this URL in the browser will reveal our data being served to us from the local server that we've just created. Hey, that's nice work. Now let's update the application to use our new server. The first change we'll make is to remove the data from the service. In housing.location.ts, we're going to remove the housing location list property and delete the array of values as well. Now we're going to add a property called URL and set it to the string value HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host port 3000 for slash locations. In the get all housing locations function, we need to make a call to the API endpoint to retrieve this data. Here's how we'll accomplish that. First, update the method signature for get all housing locations to return a typed promise. The type is housing location array. Also mark the function as async. We're going to use the fetch API to request data from the local JSON server. In the body of get all housing locations function, remove the existing code. Add a constant local variable called data and set the value to await fetch and pass in this.url as an argument to fetch. We're using the async await pattern here to reduce the amount of code that we have to write and increase the clarity. Next, add a return statement. Return awaits data.json, open close parentheses, because this is a function call, then nullish coalescing operator, empty array. If for some reason we get a nullish value from the call to data.json, we'll default to returning an empty array. There's a few things to note here. We're wrapping the fetch call in a service, which could seem like adding some complexity here. In this application, we only make this call once, but in other applications, we may reuse the same call in multiple places. Also, this gives us the added benefit of testability. We can provide a mock implementation of the service in our test that can return some data. To keep things simple, we're using the browser fetch API. For more complex examples, Angular provides the HTTP client service class, so you can use that. And to find out more, head over to angular.io. Okay, great. That function has been taken care of. We're going to repeat a lot of these steps for the get housing location by ID function. First, let's update the method signature to return a typed promise. In this case, though, it will be housing location type. 
in the body of the function at a constant local variable called data set to the value await fetch. And as a parameter to fetch, we're going to use JavaScript string interpolation to construct our URL. Using backticks, interpolate this dot URL followed by a forward slash, then interpolate ID, which is the parameter to get housing locations by ID. Next, add a return statement. Return await data.json, open close parentheses, then nullish coalescing operator, empty object literal. At this point, we've changed the implementation of the service, but now we have to update the calls to this service from the other parts of the application. In home.component.ts, we're going to update the constructor method to call the new promise-based service. Remove the existing code in the body of the function and add a call to get all housing locations. Next, attach a then function to the call. For the parameter to the then function, provide an arrow function. The parameter of the function is housing location list of type housing location array. And in the body of the function, assign this dot housing location list, the value housing location list. This is the parameter that we created. Finally, we'll update details.component.ts. In the constructor method, we'll replace the existing call to get housing location by ID with a call to our new promise-based function. Delete the code that assigns a value to this.housing location and add the following. Make a call to get housing location by ID in the housing service and pass in the housing location ID local variable. Next, attach a then function. As a parameter to the then function, provide an arrow function that has a single parameter called housing location of type housing location. In the body of the function, assign this dot housing location the value housing location. Save all of your code. Now in the browser, we can confirm that our housing locations are being displayed. We can also confirm that the application successfully allows users to select a housing location and be navigated to a populated details page. Now we're almost done here, but there's one more feature I'd like to implement. On the landing page, there's a search bar and a button that we haven't addressed. Let's turn that into a functioning filter. To do that, we'll need to work with a form and a click handler. Open home.component.ts. We need to retrieve the data from the filter in the template for this component. We could use a form group and type forms, but that might be more than we need for this task. Instead, we'll use something called a template variable. This will allow us to get a reference to an element in the template and use it in our application. Update the input element and add an attribute of the format hashtag filter. The hashtag syntax creates our template variable. In this example, the variable is called filter. Let's update the button element and add a click handler. Add click surrounded by parentheses and set it equal to the string value filter results. And since this is going to be a function, add parentheses to the end and pass in filter.value as a parameter. One quick note, you may be wondering where filter.value came from. Well, since we are using a template variable, we have access to the actual HTML element. Value is a property on the input HTML element. In our click handler invocation, we're passing in the text value from the input directly into our component class. Let's also update the app-housing-location ng4 code. Right now, we're displaying the housing location list, but we're going to switch things up. Housing location list will be our source of truth in the application for listing. So we're going to change a housing location list to filtered location list in the ng4. Now we'll update the component class. Add a new property called filtered location list, that's all camel case, of type housing location array and assign it the value of empty array. In the constructor in the then function, add a new expression. 
this dot filtered location list equals housing location list. Next, we'll update the filter results function. First, we'll add code to check for blank text. If not text, this dot filtered location list equals this dot housing location list. This allows users to clear the search box and receive all housing locations. Next, this is where we'll handle the actual filtering. This dot filtered location list equals this dot housing location list dot filter. Now, the array filter method takes a callback that defines the criteria. So, provide an arrow function with the parameter housing location and the body of the function to be housing location dot name dot two lowercase parentheses because we want to ensure that the sentence case doesn't interfere with our comparisons. Continuing, add a call to the includes function and provide text dot to lowercase parentheses as an argument to the includes function. Save this code and return to the browser. In the browser, input any text and then click the search button. The results update. This is huge. I am so, so proud of you and the progress that you've made so far. So here's what's even cooler. Right now we're searching or filtering on the name of the housing location, but you could expand the filter to compare any fields that you want. All right, friends, we've covered quite a bit, so let's recap. We've used fetch to make an HTTP request to a live endpoint. We've refactored our service and service calls to use a new format. And we've added filtering capabilities to our application with template variables and some TypeScript. All right, way to go. You should be very excited for your success, and I hope that you are enjoying the progress that you've made. And at this point, you have everything you need to get started on building the next great application in Angular. Congratulations, friends. Now, there is so much more to learn, but you are well on your way. I hope that you have enjoyed this program as I've enjoyed building this application with you and traveling with you on your Angular learning journey. Okay, friends, until the next time, go build great apps.